Howdy students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations, uh, lecture number 23rd. I'm Dr. Pravez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, again, uh, we will continue our discussions on the X-ray diffraction. Uh, but here, uh, we will talk about uh, techniques in the XRD set. Uh, so, uh, our discussions uh, will be mainly on the X-ray powder diffractions. Uh, single crystal diffractions, uh, back reflection, loud diffractions, uh, grazing incidents, uh, angle diffractions, uh, X-ray reflectivity, and a uh, small X-ray scattering. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture. Uh, so first we will start from X-ray powder diffractions, which in short we call XRPD. So uh, this kind of technique is more appropriately called uh, the polycrystalline X-ray diffractions, and there is a reason for that. Uh, that why we call that uh, polycrystalline X-ray diffraction. Uh, it is because uh, it can also be used for centered uh, for centered samples, uh, metal foils, uh, coating, and films, uh, finished part, etc. So that's why we call that. Uh, polycrystalline X-ray uh, diffraction. So this sort of the technique is basically used to determine uh, phase compositions uh, that we commonly call phase ID. Uh, that is, uh, what phases are uh, present in the sample. Uh, similarly, it can be used for quantitative phase analysis. Uh, that is, how much of each phase is present in the sample. Uh, along with that, it can be used uh, to, uh, to find out the unit cell lattice parameters. Uh, the, uh, it can be used to find out the crystal structures, uh, the average crystallite size of the nanocrystalline samples, uh, crystallite uh, micro strains, texture, uh, residual stress, uh, and along with that, it can be used in N situ diffraction that is from 11. Calvin to 1200 degrees C and air vacuum or uh, inert uh, gas. The second technique is called uh, grazing incidence angle diffractions, uh, that in short is called GIXD. Uh, so, this technique is also called glancing angle x ray uh, diffractions. Uh, so, in this technique, the incident angle is fixed at a very small angle that is smaller than uh, 5 degree uh, so that the x-ray are focused uh, in only uh, the top most surface of the uh, sample. So this technique, uh, I mean uh, glancing incident angle diffractions uh, can perform many of analysis uh, possible, uh, uh, many of analysis uh, possible with the XRPD with the added ability to resolve information as a function of the depth uh, I mean uh, depth profiling by collecting successive diffraction patterns uh, with varying uh, incidence uh, angle. So uh, that we mean uh, that with the help of this technique, uh, we can find the orientation of thin film uh, with respect to the substrate. Uh, similarly, by utilizing this, uh, we can get latest uh, mismatch uh, between the film and the substrate. We can get information about the epitaxy and textures. Uh, we can also find uh, uh, the information about uh, macro and micro strains and uh, reciprocal uh, space uh, map. Uh, X-ray reflectivity uh, that is called XRR. So uh, it's a glancing but varying incidence angles uh, we have in this technique that is combined with a matching detector's angle uh, that collect the x-rays reflected from uh, the sample surface. So the interference fringes uh, in the reflected angle uh, that uh, you can see here uh, it can be used to determine uh, the thickness of the film layer. Uh, it can be used to uh, find out the density and composition of the thin film layers. And uh, along with that, it can be used to find out roughness of the film and interfaces. Uh, back reflection low techniques. So this kind of technique is uh, used to determine the crystal orientations. Uh, so what we have in this technique, uh, in this kind of the technique, the beam is illuminated with the white radiations. 
So uh, we use filter to remove the characteristics radiation so violent from the X-ray source. Uh, so uh, the Bremsterlang radiation is left, which is a weak radiation uh, that spread over a range of the violent. So the single crystal samples diffract according to the Bragg law. So instead of the scanning uh, the angle theta to make multiple crystallographic planes diffract, we are effectively uh, scanning uh, the wavelength. I mean, so we, we are taking the, the, the advantage of the uh, wavelength. So uh, different planes diffract different uh, wavelength and the X-ray beam uh, that produce uh, a series of the diffraction uh, spot. Small X-ray uh, scattering uh, that we call SAX uh, S uh, technique. So uh, in this kind of the technique, uh, we have highly collimated beam, uh, which is combined with a long distance uh, between the sample and the detectors, uh, which allows sensitive measurement of the X-rays uh, that are just barely scattered by the sample. That is, uh, in this sort of the technique, uh, the scattering angle is smaller than uh, six degree. So uh, the length scale of the D spacing uh, that we measure in the angstrom is inversely proportioned to the scattering angles. So therefore, small angles uh, represent larger features in the uh, sample. So this kind of the technique, uh, I mean, it can be used uh, to resolve feature of, uh, of a size as large as 200 nanometer, uh, which means that it can resolve microstructural features uh, as well as crystallographic information. So we can utilize uh, these techniques uh, to determine the crystallinity of polymers, organic molecules and solutions. Uh, we can get uh, structural information on the nanometer to sub-micrometer length scale and uh, we can get ordering on the meso and nano length scales of self-assembled molecules or force and uh, along with that, we can determine the dispersion of a crystallite uh, in a matrix. Uh, single crystal diffractions that in short is called SCD. Uh, this kind of the technique is used to determine uh, the crystal structures, uh, orientations, uh, degree of crystallines, perfections or imperfections uh, uh, that we mean twinning or uh, uh, mosaicity, etc. And uh, what we have in this technique or what we do in this technique, so uh, in this technique, uh, sample is illuminated with the uh, monochromatic uh, radiations. So uh, the sample axes, uh, that is pi and the ganometer axis omega and two theta are rotated uh, to capture diffraction spots from at least uh, one hemisphere. So this is, uh, uh, I mean, easier to end it and solve the crystal structure uh, why uh, because it is uh, because its diffraction peak is uniquely uh, resolved so that's all we have for uh, the xrd analysis uh, so thanks for watching uh, see you in the next techniques um, uh, so uh, stay tuned for the coming lecture that will uh, be on uh, another type of the characterization technique uh, for material characterization. So stay tuned. Till then.